the topic we would like to discuss today is pricing in general. What are the pain points? What kind of solution do my, we might have you know, with technology? And how technology can save time, actually, to, uh, to the pricing department? So let's jump, jump in you know, right away. We have only 45 minutes. So the first topic we would like to discuss today is the external challenges that we are facing in terms of pricing. So the first question I would like to ask is for you, Vibe. So on your side, Vibe, what are the current challenges regarding the date of validity of your rates that you are submitting to your clients, your partners? Yeah, so of course, in the world we live in today, it's quite challenging with the freight uh, ongoing, with uh, a lot of cost components which uh, are valid probably for the day, you know, so, uh, so it is difficult. Uh, so our service proposals to our end clients, they have a lot of validity for a day, you know, or, or just uh, for some components of the move, we have fixed pricing, but let's say for freight, you know, that is just as per outlay or, or how do we describe it? So, uh, so it is challenging, especially also in contract situations where there are, uh, you know, you have fixed rates and then you have to go back and then tell them, you know, that uh, the world is changing. Yeah. Thank you. And you mentioned freight, you know, and uh, my question is for you now, Gordon. We are in this freight rate crisis and on your side of the world, especially in Asia, how do you tackle that? I think we were quite proud to give door-to-door -door services, and we all we always kind of confused people by giving them in cubic feet, um, where people used to be working in pounds, people the Americans were working in pounds, Europeans were working in cubic meters. Um, what the only thing we've done really different is we cannot afford now to give a door-to-door -door rate. So what we do is we split this out. We give them our OA, we give them our DA and then we rate, write them a, an essay on this is the freight today, this could be the freight um, tomorrow, this was the freight last week, and whatever we give you at the time, we, not, might, we might not be able to get it on a ship, mm. which basically means that the rate will change yet again. So what we're, I guess what we're doing is it's, it's a challenge, it's a three-tier challenge. Number one, we're dealing with RMCs, uh, Number two, and which is you know all rate filed and all that sort of stuff. So we've we've done our OA, we've done our DA, and the freight goes all over the place. And I guess what they do is they come back to us and say, you know, this is this is a joke. The corporates come back to us and say, this is a joke. And of course, the poor old private shipper who has agreed and prepaid for a move is is just totally and absolutely upset because they've gone to find a house. And now we're sending them an email saying it's going to cost, it's gone from $2,500 to $25,000. So the other thing which is happening is that we also say that if you don't want to ship now and you wanted to wait uh, for you know, a, a four-week period or a six-week period, we, there, there's no guarantee that it will, it will go down, but it might go up. So... They're saying, okay, well, let's, let's, let's hold it for a month. Okay, problem with that is, and you have to be, you have to be really sure that, um, that you tell them in advance, but it's attracting, um, the container cannot come to the house. Um, so it's, there's a charge for uh, bringing it back to the warehouse. There's a warehouse handling charge. There's a storage charge per month, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it, just, it just, it becomes so complicated. But I think, the, uh, I mean, the first year, 2020, it was, it was horrible. It was just horrible. We were, we were being called thieves. Our move managers were being called, you know, let me speak to the boss, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, the boss was never there. Um, so they- You are the boss. <laughs> they, I left for England, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think, they, the, the, one of, I think one of the most important things was that, yeah, I think you really had to look after um, your move managers. Yeah, so, um, as, so as far as freight, you know, there have been negotiations that have been made by specific companies that we can be part of that. And it's come, it's not as, as, as expensive as it was, 
Um, but we're still having problems, not only with the freight charges, but you know, getting a hold of containers, um, sailings. You might, you know, you might fill up a, a 20 foot container, a 40 foot container, but it's been bumped off a boat, and there's delays. Um, the airline business is, you know, you'll get one rate one day, um, another rate another day. So uh, I know you wanted me to keep this to 15 seconds, no, it's but okay. I could no. go on for about another half an hour. <laughs> um, but no, it's been hell, to mm. be honest with you. Um, and the hell part is really more with with the client, with the RMC, with the with the corporate. Who, I mean, they're obviously you know they're coming back to us to say, you know, help us out. What can you do? What's what's your advice? And it's tough to give advice because you don't know whether to say, listen, take this twenty thousand dollar container now because there won't be one in in a month's time. But I guess at the beginning, you know, it was quite a surprise for them, but uh, they got it, no. I think some did. Um, I think the main, the main, the RMCs. I think they uh, they realised what was going on. But I think it was also at the be at the very beginning. It was it wasn't it wasn't explained. Mm -hmm. It wasn't um, the BAR, for example, um, did not give us a white paper immediately um, because there was you know, there was a lot to talk about. There was a lot to discuss. There was a lot to find out. Um, but you know, FIDI, BAR. IAM, they all came out with white papers slowly mm -hmm. to explain mm -hmm. this. I think a lot of people thought it might last for, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months or so. I mean, who expected this down the road? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, scary, scary. The study also that was um, uh, delivered by McKinsey in last September, and they were uh, talking about this crisis that you are very clearly describing, Gordon. And they were saying within their study that at the end of the day, they were expecting to get light again at the end of the tunnel, you know, to come by the spring this year. Mm -hmm. And so maybe a stabilization, first of all, and then a go down of, the, of this uh, crisis of prices onto the containers. But uh, now, we don't expect this to happen before maybe the beginning of uh, 2025, maybe mm -hmm. and not before. I don't know if you agree with me on it, but... Uh, <laughs> I, don't think the price, sorry, I don't think the prices will come back to, to what they were. Um, but, you know, I think what's scary to look at is how much money these steamship companies mm. have made. Yeah. And they're publicizing it. So yeah, and I think that's the problem because they get used to it now, you know. They're making billions of dollars. So why would there's no incentive to Maersk or so to change it? It changes the, the rules of the games. Also acquiring, you know, uh, road freight uh, companies and things like that. that in recently, one of the biggest uh, shipping lines is going to acquire uh, Jeffco which used to be, when, uh, within Europe, a uh, huge uh, road transport company. So that's so, so changing um, the, the game from different perspectives that mm -hmm. we don't, do not consider as a direct uh, consequence of uh, the high, high rates. And my next question is for you, Enrique, is um, the freight, you know, the freight rates are increasing, but also the raw materials, you know, the packing materials. So how do you handle that? Well, this is not a, a new problem. Uh, well, we have uh, our office uh, in Madrid. Uh, is uh, like uh, 100 meters far from the huge Amazon uh, warehouse uh, distribution in Madrid. So you can see daily uh, the the amount, the huge amount of trucks coming and going, and also the uh, the amount of uh, trucks with packing material. There's a specific Spanish uh, um, packing material company, huge, uh, and you can see the green trucks coming and going all the time. No? So in the past, we have st already started to see how the prices of the carton paper uh, was uh, higher and higher. Uh, so we started thinking about that, and uh, we decided to change the model from the just-in-time to the just-in-case. <laughs> uh, so that was uh, something that at least you know, um, gave us a little bit of advantage, thinking that this could be something temporary. Uh, just a hope, you know. Mm -hmm. Hope sometimes is what gives us uh, uh, something to, uh, for, for what to live, no? <laughs> and uh, and then, well, use creativity. I mean, uh, trying to encourage all the members of the team to, to use creativity, and from the uh, last packer to the last person of the of the office to see how can we save sometimes uh, few cartons. Uh, try to think about um, alternative materials, uh, of course, recycling, uh, 
uh, all that kind of, uh, of stuff. It's not easy because it is something that we cannot control. I think nobody, uh, no one of these 412 attendees uh, can uh, create their own boxes. We all purchase packing material, no? Uh, so it's not in our hands really to make uh, a huge difference, but I think there's still room uh, for improvement there. Excellent, thank you. So those were some of the external challenges. Let's now move on to internal challenges. So Vibe, um, we all know that recruitment is tough. And how do you, in your department, how do you recruit like pricing managers? Because it's a key position. Yeah, I think it's, it's a twofold question. Yeah, it's difficult recruitment at the moment. Um, although we still can find people. So, um, but let's say for that pricing position, I think the, the traditional pricing position is really changing. Mm -hmm. So the way we look ahead is, let's say that's gonna be much more data analytic people. So, so you need higher skilled labor on that position than you traditionally had. So traditionally the, the pricing people were the more experienced move coordinators who transitioned into the pricing role because they knew about agents and they know the world and how to, to create a price that let's say in our company was traditionally where they were coming from. And if, if you look now, uh, these are the young kids. So we have uh, in our company currently, I think four people in the pricing department and they are all data people uh, uh, with, with no history in the moving industry. Mm. So, so different people, um, we can find those people, but then to keep them attracting to this business, that's, a, that's another challenge. So uh, we still can find them. Excellent. So, Gordon, on your side, how do you train or transmit knowledge on the pricing fun function, you know, from, uh, from the old pricing gurus, you know, to the newbies? Um, so, each country does its own rates. Um, the RMC business is all done out of um, Singapore, so we do rates on behalf of everyone. We're quite fortunate that, and there's no wood here, is there? Um, <laughs> we're quite fortunate that we've kept our, our, our senior pricing team. And I think it's the younger people that we're losing. Um, so, I mean, there is, there is turnover. Um, and I think every time that we lose someone, our manager has, has stayed. Um, so the manager for pricing will always train the, a new person. And the training takes, I would reckon, about three to four weeks or so, you know, because it, it really is, especially in Singapore, it's different pricing for, it, it's all over the shop. Um, it's tough to get, um, and I think, I th it, it takes a, a specific person to do pricing. I mean, it's a desk job, um, you, you, don't, you don't get out very often, and especially where moving companies are in Singapore, in China, in Malaysia, in the Philippines, we're in basically in the middle of nowhere, so it's not as if you can you can go for lunch um, in a in a mall and shop at the same time. You're getting into a cab. You're, and nine times out of ten, people stay in the office. So, mm -hmm. I think what we've done over the years is we've excuse the phrase we've we've tarted up our offices. Uh, we've made new stations. We've we've instead of giving them a little desk in the corner, it's a bigger desk. They can spread out. We have, um, you know, we've made coffee areas that they can just get up and have a chat with someone else or whatever. So we've really gone sort of overboard trying to make uh, the area as, as nice as possible. Mm -hmm. And, and I, think, I think what, what tends to happen, because we are so far away uh, from anything central, um, I think the camaraderie is really important. And what we're trying to do, I suppose, is not only have the pricing team talk to each other, but you know the management has got to get involved. They've got to come down. And they've got to see what they're doing. They've got to, we've got to praise the work that, uh, that they are doing. Um, so no, it's a, there's a lot of focus on that because it's a really important uh, part of our, our, um, our work. So. And I guess you touch on some points, you know, and this is also um, my next question for you, Enrique, because the pricing task can be repetitive and daunting, and how do you do to train and, not train, sorry, motivate your team, you know? Well, I think this is linked to what 
Gordon have said. Uh, there are several theories about it, and uh, I, I like to think that everyone should be able to self-motivate. But it's in uh, the management uh, to give the tools for each and every one self be able to, to self-motivate. Having said that, then there are easier, thing, easier things to do. For example, uh, let's follow up on those quotations that we have quoted. Uh, if we have succeed, let's give the opportunity uh, to the rates team to know that 75% uh, of the uh, bookings of the quotations have been booked. Um, at the end of the day, they are, um, let's say, number people, no? They love Excel sheets and uh, formulas. Uh, so why not trying to also give them that information back, you know? And I, I am sure that they really appreciate to know uh, that what they have been doing um, is also is measured and it is something that can be uh, improved. And then you can offer free lunches on, you know, or a vacation in Aruba, but that's a, a different story. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. So those were some of the many pain points, you know, that we uh, we are fa facing currently. But moving on to the next topic is the digital solution. So I'm sure that you have tried and tested some of the those the digital solution that's on the market. And what are the benefits of those? Maybe Vibe, if you can start with you. And I will ask you this question two or three of you. I think it's important. Yeah, so uh, platforms came in, I don't know, probably already 10 years ago. Uh, I think when PricePoint, one of the first, uh, came around. Uh, we are a company who are onboarding these technologies rather quick. So we try to, let's say, uh, be engaging with these technologies to see where it can help us. Um, uh, we've seen a couple of initiatives over time. I think uh, currently we're still using price point. It's still uh, in our systems. It's integrated in what we do. It helped us driving efficiency. So for that reason, it was a, was a good system. Uh, we saw Matt coming. Matt for us is more the automation of, of a response to a rate request. Mm -hmm. So that helped us to, to reduce the number of people just doing repetitive business and answering emails with emails so so that wasn't was a good solution um, are we very satisfied I think we're okay where we are today but I think uh, uh, there's so much more to do because uh, the way we look at it pricing sh is basically the end thing you know so it's basically initially designing what does a customer want and then at the end there is a price instead of let's say us going for the commodity way, because we're all giving one price for a move, which we don't know what it is, where at the end of the day, it's an individual moving, and all these individuals are different people with different needs, and they need also, according to that, a different service with a different price. And, and none of the systems we see today are able to do that. So, um, so that's a bit where we are. So, uh, Excellent. Thank you. And Enrique, uh, same question to you. What kind of tech have you used and tested? Mm, we opposite to Borman. We are not one of we are not one of the let's say first companies uh, um, using technology. You know, uh, in in the, in, the, in, our, in our industry, it always takes us some more time than uh, it should uh, to get this uh, this text. Uh, we have one uh, lady here, Georgia, who is. Uh, uh, who is aware of that uh, because, you know, uh, for example, we are giving rounds and rounds and rounds thinking and thinking and thinking about, uh, about it, you know. And the ideal uh, tool that we should uh, use uh, like this uh, would be the, the, the tool that gives us um, Simplicity, you know, mm -hmm. that's uh, what my people is uh, looking for. And th there is n no tool as of today that give us that kind of, uh, of, uh, of facility. You know, it's, uh, we have to make maybe a mix of several of them uh, to find something that could be uh, really, really good for us. Uh, but, uh, for example, if we receive a request for an origin service in these changing times, my rating team uh, always tells me, you know, these kind of platforms can serve for an overnight reply. 
but uh, now uh, I have to uh, explain all the difficulties, set the right expectations, because every single move is different, mm. uh, and this cannot be made with the current uh, applications, that, uh, at least that we have been introduced to. So this is something that we should, I think, uh, Thank you. have in mind. And at Asian Tigers, do you have like a common system that you have tried and tested, or yeah. every office is trying like bits nope. and, no? One system. Okay. Um, and when I say one system, um, there is another system out there, and uh, you, you mentioned it. Um, I think when it first came out, we were kind of scared. They're going to take all our information, they're going to do this with it, they're going to do that with it. So we were very cautious to start with. Um, so we decided to, and what we didn't want to do was to to play games. You know, if you're going to give a rate, that's it. That's the rate for X number of, there's no discounts, there's no whatever, whatever, whatever. So when you take on a project like this, it's a lot of work. I mean, it is a one-time thing. I mean, but to get your staff, your pricing staff, to you know, spend the next whatever, to put thousands upon thousands of agents and whatever, rates. And of course, once you open something up, it encourages people, you have no idea who they are, to ask you for their rates as well. So um, I, think I, I think there is a, a system that we have where if I don't recognize the agent, I don't give them the rates. And mm -hmm. so, but is there, so I guess we're still trying it. Um, I asked a couple of our officers before I left, um, <laughs> before I left, um, you know, how, how they were getting on. And they were basically saying that, you know, five to 10% of that was um, being answered through the system. Um, but, you know, when our people are in the office, we, we have a pretty sophisticated, um, you know, our quotations that go out, they seem to go on forever. I mean, you, it's difficult to find the price sometimes, you know, because you're trying to explain yourself all the way through. This is the origin charges. This is what um, is included in the origin charges. And then you take the next two pages saying, this is what it doesn't include, mm -hmm. you know. So it does, it does go on forever. Mm -hmm. But and I never really realized, I mean, someone's going to move. Why do they need something at 3 o'clock in the morning in Singapore? Why do they need something at four, our 4 o'clock in the morning? Why can't they wait? But, you know... Technology is technology. People want it now. People want to, you know, before they want to wake up with the answers. So that's why we tried it. Um, and, and talking about technology still, uh, what kind of additional functionalities would you love to see in your dream digital tool? Okay. Difficult this question, is going to yeah. be rather embarrassing for me because <laughs> um, what I basically want is a human robot that can work, you know, 24 hours a day. That's expensive. She's, she, he, you know, um, are gorgeous to look at because they come on a screen, uh, whether it's a male or female. They talk to you. They, they find out all about the move. But it's a robot, and they don't have to go to sleep. But so I don't that's think, my no, ideal. But I don't think that's good, good. so far, you know. Well, it's, it's actually, I saw, I, I guess this was part of a dating game, wasn't it, where, yeah. you know, Instead of getting married to a, a, a partner, you take this home. I mean, it's like, you know, click here and mm. charge it all up or whatever. Um, but it's, I think it's coming. It's data. D data is, uh, <laughs> what data is, who owns it? Data has, has the power of... Uh, I think my wife's already got one. So, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, I think you're right, Enrique. I think uh, we're moving to a data-driven uh, industry. There is loads of data, but it's very s spread around at the moment. And I think with data, we're going with data analytics to predictive data analytics that we can predict what the price and the cost will be. And, and, and I think that's where we're heading to. Uh, and then really uh, personas driven, so really per person from the individual either policy or from position or... You know, I, I always think it's, it's quite a strange, you know, uh, there are people sleeping in the Four Seasons and there are people sleeping in the Crown Plaza and there are people sleeping in the Holiday Inn. But we're still giving them the same rate, you know, because we don't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, because we just got a rate request or uh, and, and everybody is different. So I think when we have that in play and the way we foresee it, you know, and, and going back to you, uh, I always call it the, the Tinder of moving. You know, is that you really were swiping uh, through the uh, services and swiping through what you want. 
you design your own move and your own price is basically the, the, the result of that. And we really rudimentary already uh, do that. Uh, when, uh, for example, I have to, I, I'm invited to participate in an RFP. Uh, I know the history of that uh, corporate account. I know the most of them, uh, of the moves will be uh, between 15 and 20 cubic meters from Colombia uh, to Spain. Uh, even though I'm asked for 2,000 rates, most probably, uh, the, the way that my account will analyze the data is based on that uh, particular uh, lane because they know, they have the information, you know? Uh, of course, so we are, I, I am quoting using the, the data that I have, uh, which is very limited because it's in my mind, there's, there's no um, hypersonic computer uh, <laughs> thinking 24-7 uh, at uh, speed of light, you know? So mm -hmm. as soon as the technology advance, I think that we will be able to really go to the target very, very easily. And quickly, I guess, yeah. so I'm conscious of time, you know, so the last topic of today is, is the extra time that you could get with the right technology, you know, and my question is to you, Maxime, um, with this extra time available, how the pricing department could use this extra time? And I guess you will need a microphone. Well, um, I would say before answering to this question, Eric, and thank you for asking, I think we should do maybe a summary of uh, uh, the things that, that you have said, you guys. And uh, especially something that attracted my attention was said by you, Gordon, about the wish to get, you know, something like uh, robot human, human robot, or I would say more hum robot human and dead, or something human-like able, you know, to understand your sensitiveness, your way of thinking without having, to, without having to express it. So it would save us time, it would ease um, us to get a better life in so many topics. And as a matter of fact, I think that we are asking to ourselves those questions because we see the life outside, I mean the one that we have outside of the industry here, is driven by some new experiences, meaning when you want to book your holidays, should you be at the cult and that you were saying sleeping here or there at some point into the Miramar and so on? Just takes you, what, 10 seconds to book your hotel if you know what you need, okay? If you want to order, you know, a, a meal like a pizza and so on and, get, and getting this delivered, it takes you 15 minutes. And uh, from a personal point of view, you know, when I started, you know, trying to guess what was needed to do into this business, I just started to think of the um, expats and their partners by themselves to see how we could betterize the experience uh, during the transition period and its preparation. And rapidly, it appeared that they were needing to get something given by their corporate account, by their HR department, which was, which was related to the easier experience given by those apps onto the smartphones. And I think that if we're around this table at the moment is because we understand that uh, from a business, from a professional point of view, we need to give some help to our coordinators, to our pricers, to our pricing managers, whatever the name that we give them, also including what you were saying, you know, also in terms of data and analysis and data projection. Um, because I don't think that our young people into this industry are willing to continue to work on spreadsheets, to uh, have this, I would say, maybe boring experience that we are still continuing to do on our sites because we have been educated this way, with the effort, you know, of using our brain to press it, to get some juice and to give it to the clients. Now it's just about experience and uh, user experience and making it cool and simple, like we are saying to everybody, including our uh, workload, our, uh, including our staff. So in terms of uh, um, time reduction now, because uh, this is good to think of people, uh, our staff, uh, to, to give them a better life at work, sure. But what is the output of us for us as managers of our companies? And we need to save time for sure, to save money, because we see lots of margins reducing, you know, <laughs> more and more and more for the benefits of some of the people like the C-freight companies that uh, we're talking about. And uh, clearly, 
um, it's important to do a kind of parallel to see, well, what are the kind of tools that we can put on the table to please people, therefore, and to save time, and therefore to increase back our margins. And um, as an example, let's move back to what we're doing and thinking um, of the virtual surveys, maybe five years ago. Lots of people are saying, well, that's crap. It will never, you know, be uh, replacing the physical surveys, you know, all these bloody pictures, videos, you know. We must come on site and uh, make sure that people breathe the air, you know, of what we're saying, our emotion, our passion about our company and uh, how, we, how much we give blood for that to make sure that they're very happy with the moves that they're going to experiment, okay? And at some point, there is something that was uh, invented, a super cool thing, you know, for everybody here, the COVID, you know? <laughs> and uh, we started to say, well, maybe the virtual surveys are something super cool because it's going to save us from losing completely our business, whereas we're all facing something like minus 20, minus 30, minus 40% of activity in 2020, okay? And uh, at this stage, um, I was discussing a lot about these topics with uh, a few friends of the industry, and I was saying, personally myself, I think, it's important that we focus on the times that our surveyors spend on the roads, and also for ecological purpose, it was not very sexy, I may say. And uh, given we, in general, have a booking ratio of, what, 30%, it was meaning that there were 70% of the time, which was meaningless, okay? Just uh, spending some money on the roads, and trying to convince people, but for whatever the reasons, you know, but not mine. And um, I think pricing scenarios are about the same. I think it's time to try to change um, the rules of the game by putting on the table some new tools in order to save time for the pricing managers and to put their skills at the disposal of some other aspects of the company. Should it be for accounting supervision, for coordination supervision as well? And that's the same as for the salespeople, you know. Um, for ages, we have always said, I think, all together, I'm sorry if I you think I speak for you guys, but that at any stage of our history, there would be always some salespersons. Uh, tech has replaced salespersons by force since uh, a few years now. Um, so what I see is that we get lots of people moving from the front office to the back office where there is still some room to, to save some money and to generate some additional margins here and there. And I think this is um, the path that we may follow or at least observe. Uh, and also what uh, Viber was saying, getting this experience acquired by pricing managers to work closely with some people that you on board with new skills, which is the data analysis, and analysis in my opinion. Sorry for this long introduction. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And a uh, question for you, Vipa. So how would your pricing department could use this extra time if they have access to the right tool? Well, I, I, I agree. Let's say what Max was saying. You know, with, with the data, I think we want to get more business. So we want to grow the company. So we want to use, let's say, that data to analyze to be better prepared to get more business. And I think uh, that's by positioning it better. And, and what you were saying, indeed, that's what we're doing, you know, we're, we're driving data daily to understand, let's say, where is the business and, you know, being still bombarded as a business also with spreadsheets from, from this group, but also from all the RMCs and so on. We need to, to digitalize that. But if that's over, let's say, yeah, we're, if we're in a, in a stage where really, you know, that is fully automated and, uh, and we have indeed the, the, the robots doing that on, uh, on our behalf then we can go to uh, real in, uh, internal uh, uh, growth, basically, and really add value. That's where we, at the end of the day, we're a service industry, mm -hmm. and we need to add service to these clients. And I think the people we have should all be focused to add service to the client layer. And my belief is that down the line, moving companies will consist only of people who are in the outside delivering service to a client. And if they don't deliver service, they do something else. We should look at either automate that or or something else, because functions in, uh, whether it's in the finance part or it's in the pricing part, that will fade away because it will be automated. So that's a little bit of how I look at it. And then in combination with, uh, with kind of the more, more better data is with auditing. So I think for us as a company also, we're looking at how can we in the process get automatic audit, audit points to make sure that we stay on track in margin development and things like that. 
So that's from a company perspective much more interesting at a point in time when we have, let's say, this automated. Thank you. And Enrique? But the extra time, you know? I would involve this kind of, uh, well, this, this profile more into the uh, really where this uh, cost come from. I mean, I would, I, I, I don't like the idea of them just introducing data in a uh, spreadsheet and uh, uploading to, uh, to, a, to a platform. Uh, I would make them part of uh, the packing services, talk to the moving coordinators, uh, because if, if I think in some of my rate department, and they can be 30, 365 days working from home and uh, just putting data in an, in, in an Excel uh, mm -hmm. spreadsheet. And so they really don't know where this uh, money or the, where these rates comes from. Uh, management tells, okay, the, the wardrobe uh, cost is 24 euros, the book size box is uh, 12, blah, 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 blah. This is the salary cost and uh, okay, so 28 euros per cubic meter. So these, they are like machines. So I, I would use that extra time for them to be part of the um, management, or put it that way, or, or, or the organ organization. And uh, again, using the, the creativity, trying to look for a better uh, optimization of the, of the way we create our prices. Thank you. And finally, Gordon? Um, I think follow-up is really important. Um, I think giving a price or doing, doing a survey and then giving a price is only the first thing. I think you need to find out, you know, have they received the quote, you know, and someone has to do that, and that could be the pricing. Um, I also think that, you know, the, as, as the move gets closer to a decision made, um, the more information you have on that move and the more information that you give the answers to some of their questions, I think you're going to get um, them leaning your way. Mm. So. You know, again, very simply, I think that it's getting to know your customer, and if they feel that uh, you are taking that time and trouble to, to find out more about the move. I mean, they might, for example, um, if, we're, if we're working with someone like GB Liners, um, we can give them an address. GB Liners can find out, you know, you know the, the, they can actually go on the internet and uh, find out exactly uh, where it is, how many floors there are, is there parking restrictions or whatever, and advisors in advance. That's the sort of thing we, we can go back to our clients with and just say, oh my God, you know, I think it impresses them. I really do. I think it's, uh, you know, they're interested in our move. Let's give it to them. Let's give it to AD and GB Liners. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.